Hey everybody, today is the day. Um, we are finally at a stage that uh, we can put paint on the inside of this car. Super exciting. Um, I spent uh, most of the morning running errands. Uh, it's like early afternoon right now. Um, but uh, I now have a box of paint, reducer, hardener, and uh, we are going to get the interior of this car done up in orange today. It's going to be the right color. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about paint. Um, I'm not going to talk about like what kind of paint you should get or what, you know, all that stuff. I want to talk about where you're going to buy your paint. Um, so, I went to a local paint store, uh, an auto body paint store, and they mixed the paint on location. and. Uh, I spent probably an hour or so there um, and uh, you'll notice I don't know if you can see it from here but the front fender from the rabbit is not on the car right now and that's because I took the fender with me to get the paint matched um, I know that this car is original paint I know the paint code was most likely Phoenix red so um, I didn't have 100% confirmation of that, but when I looked at the paint chip, it looked, you know, to, I guess, my eye or whatever, it looked more red than the, the actual color of the car right now. So I took it in, I, I just pulled the fender off. It, it was loosely attached to the car anyway. Um, I took it off, took it in with me. They had a spectrometer that they put on the fender and actually scanned the color, put it in the computer, came up with potential matches to the paint code. Um, so the paint originally, yes, was uh, Phoenix Red. But since I'm a guy, I don't have that eye for color. Uh, the lady that worked there was super awesome. Uh, and this is at Wesco. So Wesco is, uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're national, but they're at least a West Coast chain where they do, they supply auto body stores with their materials so they're really knowledgeable about the processes they've been able to educate me on what to buy you know how to mix it how to use it all that stuff so <clears throat> so i'll show you the fender um basically i just pulled it off took it in they just hand polished a little portion of it right here to take the scan with and here Right next to my, th to just to the right of my thumb, is the color they mixed for it. And in the shade, even in the shade, it is really, really close. And actually, she put just a little more. She said she was going to put a little bit more black in it after she mixed that. So, what color is it? The color that we ended up buying is not Phoenix Red. And don't worry, I didn't buy a whole gallon of paint. I bought two quarts because I wanted to have enough to do the inside, the doors, and then just little touch-ups here and there. I might end up going back and getting more paint to do the roof and the hood. I'm not sure, but regardless. So what do I have here? Corvette orange, flame orange. <laughs> um, not even close in the paint chip to what I actually got. But when they mixed it, did a test dab on it, and it came out almost exactly perfect to, uh, to the color. So if I would have went with the original Phoenix Red, it would have been as it left the factory, but the paint wouldn't have been right. Um, this paint now has 40 some years of fade on it and use. So we've had to compensate a little bit for just time so my tip to you is if you're gonna do a project like this and you're gonna try to match what you already have it's best if you can take the car in or take a piece of the car in like if you're if you're working on something that has a fuel door take the fuel door with you if you have I mean a fender is not very hard to diff, hard to transport so if you can pull the fender off take a fender with you great if you're cutting out some things and it has the original paint on it, save a piece 
that they can scan because it'll go a long ways in helping them match new paint to what you already have. So, um, so that's my tip to you. And now um, I have a little bit of masking work. I, I'm going to rework the way I mask these doors because my back just took like a beating yesterday leaning over the door trying to paint the inside. So um, I picked up hopefully some better tape. I'm going to retape these cardboard inserts and cut them up a little bit and make it so I have a little bit better access to the inside of the car. Um, and uh, and then uh, I'm going to get some orange on this thing and make it right. So let's get to it. All right, everybody. It's paint mixing time. This is pretty awesome. This is, uh, this is like... We are so, we are like minutes from painting the inside of this car. Now I know, I know that this is not like the end of the project and it's, there's still a lot to do. There's still exterior door, the exterior doors. You can tell them I'm working on the house too. There's still the drivers and passenger doors to paint. There's still a patch I need to make in the lower rocker panel on the rear, behind the rear wheel. Still need to fix the lower rocker panel on the driver's side. Still need to figure out what I'm going to do with the hood and the roof. Uh, if I can sand out the, st the racing stripes that somebody put on there, or if I should just scuff them and paint over them. And since I got to paint the rocker, I got to paint the lower uh, lower rear wheel arch, and I got to paint the rocker on the driver's side and the doors. Might as well paint the hood and the roof too. So in here I have two quarts of paint. Um, so just to give you an idea of a cost breakdown of where we're at on this project, um, I spent about 75 bucks on primer and I got a gallon, big can of lacquer thinner. Um, and then they throw in like stir sticks and funnels and all that, or strainers and all that kind of stuff you usually get when you go to the paint stores. So they give you that stuff. Um, 70 bucks for the paint gun from Eastwood. Um, this is the part that hurt, the paint. Um, obviously, anything with a red tint is going to be more expensive than white or black. Um, so the paint, I got two quarts of the orange. I got a quart of the reducer. I got two bottles of hardener. Um, the hardener, what this allows it to do is be chemical resistant. Um, so. If you ever worked on single stage paint and it comes off with just about any type of solvent, it's because there's no hardener in it. If you put hardener in it, and let's say I spill antifreeze or brake fluid or adhesive remover or something on it, it won't dissolve the paint in the future. So, um, so we're going to paint this with hardener. And again, this is all based on the advice of the people at the paint store. I'm nowhere near an expert on this stuff. I just go in and I, here's the color I want to paint it. Here's what I have tell me what to do. So they're super helpful. Use your auto body paint store. Um, use their knowledge. And uh, so this product, so when we, when we mixed primer, we measured one to one. So you basically, if you're going to mix 10 ounces of material or 20 ounces of material, which is what the, what the paint cup will hold. So you would put in 10 ounces of, uh, 10 ounces of, thinner, 10 ounces of, of primer. Really straightforward. So this is a different mix ratio. This goes eight parts paint, one part reducer, one part hardener. So uh, so for uh, there's a gradient on the side of this cup if you want to measure a full cup of, of stuff and it measures it out for you. Um, since we're going to do uh, it, we're going to do almost a full cup because I'm going to use more than one cup of paint. So I'm going to measure, I'm going to use to the to the 10 gradient on here. Uh, uh, it's not 10 ounces, but it's a full cup, which is almost 24 ounces. So as long as you're measuring evenly, it, it, it will work out. So I'm going to do eight part, you know, eight, one and one. So I'm going to fill it with orange paint put in one part reducer, one part hardener. And that will be it. I'm going to put on some gloves because I know somewhere during this process 
I'm gonna end up looking like a Cheeto. Wait to see how orange this paint is. It's pretty rad. I mean, obviously you've already seen it on the car, but it's always kind of cool seeing it in the can because, I don't know, just, it's always like, ooh, ah, when you see it in the can, so. Look at that. So rad. Can't believe that we're actually getting color on the inside of this car. Like when I bought this car, I was or got this car for free basically. I was super frustrated that somebody had already done. So I've been looking at this car in multiple stages or multiple colors on the interior for years. And it's nice to finally see it coming together in one color. And try to minimize the amount of runnage I get down the side of this can. Make sure I can see my marks. Set the lid back on there so I don't knock anything into it. So there we have our eight. I'm going to put our reducer in to bring it up to nine. So it doesn't take much compared to the amount of paint we're putting in. And then hardener. Now reducer generally doesn't go bad. Hardener will go bad. So that's why I got two containers of it because chances are it will probably go bad before I get to the other can. Or sorry, get to the other things I need to paint. <laughs> Multiple layers to this. There we go. That's it. Ta -da. Now, I'm going to kit up, mix this up, put it in the gun, and then we're going to go spray. Don't ever use, like, I don't have a respirator as an excuse because I tried that for a long time. I looked on Amazon, this was $17, like super cheap. And like, you know, cause like when you're spraying the, like you don't smell the paint. So totally worth it. You know, it's not getting in your lungs. Don't forget to set up the paint gun again, too.
All right, so you missed a whole bunch of talking while the compressor was recharging because I hit the wrong button on the GoPro, which sounds really silly because there's only two buttons. So here we are. We've got one really nice coat of, or just starter coat of orange on here. Um, there's some spots where I'm thin. There's some spots where I thought that I would have, uh, well, I'll show you back here. I got a, a little water drops that came out of the compre out of the gun. I thought that I'd had all the water out of it, and I do have a, a water collector, and I just need to be a little more aggressive about stopping, making sure it's drained, and then continuing painting. So um, I'm going to finish up what I have left in the in the pot here. I'm going to hit some of the, the spots that I didn't quite get enough paint on. Fog them down pretty good and uh, and then we'll uh, mix up more paint and put on a second coat. I'll try to get try to get about three coats on um, and uh, you know it's about 80 degrees out here so the paint in the direct sun is drying really fast. Um, I know 80 probably isn't hot for some of you but um, it's pretty hot for Seattle so I'm going to lay on what I have left in the cup here and mix up more paint. Now it's time for coat number two, and this stuff goes on really thick, so um, I think we'll be good with two coats. I'm going to use up, I mixed up another full cup, plus uh, uh, some ounces, and uh, so I'm going to shoot what I mixed, and then uh, we'll be done. <laughs> this part will be actually done. It's so awesome. I'm going to try to make sure I pause more and clean out my little water trap here so I don't drip any more into the into the rear. So part of learning, part of doing something for the first time and honestly if I had a better water evacuation system for the compressor because uh, the compressor is working a little harder than a bigger one would um, I would probably have not had that happen. So but that's all right. I mean, look at it. It looks great so far. So let's get the rest of this paint on here. Alright, I have no idea how orange my face is right now, but I don't care because this part of the project that has kind of bugged me for a long time, I know it's not really a, uh, it's not really a big deal for a lot of people, um, so, you know, just throwing some paint on the inside of it, but it really uh, kind of signifies to me that that like the project is going forward and it's going to happen and uh, uh, you know, like I said I've been looking at um, I'll put in a picture of how it looked before I started all this because I think I have a couple of, of interior pictures on my computer and you can see how it looked when I got it and to see it now um, what a difference um, and uh, I'm going to sip my adult beverage and I will give you guys the walk around with some fancy music and you guys can see just how far this whole thing has come 
in just in the six months that we've been doing these channels and these videos and uh, you know it's exciting it's exciting to see how things are moving forward and uh, you know like this pro this part of the project I wasn't sure I was ever going to get to and look and now I'm here so uh, if I can do it you can too get out there you know just just grind on it and make it happen so without further ado let's check it out What we do here is go back, 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 back. So, that is a very successful end to this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to continue to sip my adult beverage while I finish cleaning up because I have got crap everywhere right now in the driveway. So, huge mess, but totally worth it. Um, super happy with the result. Uh, I'm just going to let this sit, let the cure paint cure for a couple weeks before I really get back. I'm not going to have much time in the next couple weeks, honestly, to work on the rabbit. So uh, I'm just going to push it back. I'm going to let it sit outside and kind of bake out here for a little bit. But uh, it's going to be a few weeks before we get to it. The next time we work on the rabbit, we're actually going to take a bunch of this interior that we have and put it in the car because it's going to clean out so much room in the, in the shop. Uh, being able to put stuff back in the car and clean up and I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that I need to go through and get parts back in this car and figure out what I'm going to sell what I'm going to not so so that is it thank you so much for watching Throttle Grotto and until next time get out there and work on something <laughs>